Thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is the latest and newest widget by Flutter 1.17 and the widget is called Navigation Rail. So let's get started. All right, by the end of this video, you'll be able to create this very simple Navigation Rail kind of animation. So there is this new widget inside Flutter that has been added called Navigation Rail. So what is a Navigation Rail? So this is an example of what a Navigation Rail looks like. So you might have seen in different examples like Google Photos. So you could see these are the different Navigation Rail destination or you could say buttons or Firebase where you are able to expand the sidebar into its navigation rail bar. So in essence, navigation rail is a side navigation component that displays three to seven app destinations. And you will probably also have a floating action button optionally. So these are the different principles that you might want to see. And it's found inside the material.io website. So inside the Flutter dock, a navigation rail is just a material widget that will be displayed either on the left or the right side of the app and it's used to navigate between a small number of views, typically between 3 and 5. So the first or last element will probably be a row where you are able to expand it. So here is an example but this look too squished. So I have placed it inside Dartpad and this is just a very simple example on how you can implement a navigation rail. So you could see here there is the first button, then you have the second button and then you have the third button. And you could see the selected index being changed accordingly. So in order for you to create a navigation rail, first of all, you need to wrap it in a row. And then with the children, you will have the navigation rail. Inside the navigation rail, you will have this thing called destinations. So you could say these are like your different tabs for your navigation tab. But now it is named as navigation rail. So you can go to the different, for example, screens. So you can go to the first screen, second screen, and third screen accordingly. And inside the destinations, it requires this thing called navigation rail destination. So this contains your icon, your selected icon, and then your label text first. So the thing is currently you are able to see the text when you are selecting the button. This is due to a label type over here. So if you want it to have it not get shown at all, you can type in none. So this navigation rail label type is an enum that has none selected and all. If you run this, you could see that there is no text at all. And if I were to put all and run this, there will be different text for every button you could see. So I'll prefer this because this makes sense and the user does not have to guess what button goes to which screen. And then after you have created your navigation rail, what you can do is you can have a vertical divider, which is this line over here that looks like a mini shadow that's on top of the screen here. And then you have this expanded where you have the center text that shows you what is the selected index. So when you click on these, this changes or set the state of the current selected index. It is found on the on destination selected and it gives you the index variable which you can overwrite by having set state. So initially you will start at zero which is on top and then you can overwrite it by having set state. All right, the next thing that I want to share with you is that the navigation rail is able to extend itself. So currently you only see the icons and once you click on, for example, this icon over here, it will extend. 
extend the navigation rail to occupy a navigation bar spacing. So we are going to do that. All right, so I have with me a Flutter web project with this navigation rail. So it works perfectly. So inside your navigation rail, we are going to play around with these extended parameters. So type in extended and then we can just put in a true. So let's save this. And if you were to go back, so there's an assertion error. So what this means is that since our extended is okay, it is true. However, it will not work because our navigation rail label type supposed to be none. So instead of this label type, we either can just put none over here and let's save this and it works. You could see that it's extended and then you could see that it is working accordingly. At the same time, the label type is defaulted as none over here. So having a null or a label type that is not overwritten, it's fine also. So you could see that it looks okay. Now the next thing is that inside this example, you could see there is this flat action button that is animating very nicely and smoothly. So it is first a circle and then it becomes a extended flat action button. So how are we going to do that? So there is a way for you to do that in Flutter. So go to the source code of navigation rail by pressing command or control on the navigation rail word. And then you need to scroll all the way down until you see this animation. So under the extended animation, there is this example that allows you to create a floating action button that animates itself between the normal and extended states of the navigation rail. So it gives you an example of how you can create this widget called extendable FAB and it has all the required code over here. So what we are going to do is we are going to copy this whole code. So we might just copy the override code over here and then at the bottom of our file, we can just create a stateless widget. Let's call it extendable FAB. And then we will just copy until the override from our second last curly bracket. And then we will paste the code. The next thing is that we have to delete all of this documentation backslash. So what you can do is you can alternate shift and highlight. So you could see in VS Code that it highlights everything accordingly. And then you can just delete this. The next thing is that you could see that lerp double is not defined. So this is under the Dart UI library. So just import it. And now you have your extendable FAB. So let me go through what this extendable FAB is. Since in this example over here, you could see that it is animating from a circle to a rounded rectangle. That means we need an animated builder. So we will use this animated builder and then at the same time, we can get the animation from the context using navigation rail dot extended animation brackets context. So this will give the animation, which is a double. So a number, then we can pass in the animation inside the animated builder and this animated builder does not require a ticker provider mixing. If you were to go to animated builder, you could see that it is extended from animated widget. And if you click on this again, so the beauty about animated builder is that we don't need to extend a ticker provider mixing, which is something that we require whenever we want any animations. So that's what animated builder is really good at. All right. The next thing is that we will have a container which is the height of 56. So the author said that the extended FAB has a shorter height than the regular FAB. So we will then use this height 56 for its reference. 
The next thing is that we will have a padding of symmetric vertical, meaning we are going to have some spacing from the top and bottom. And then there is this thing called lerp double. So what does lerp mean? So lerp is actually linear interpolation, or you could say number from the beginning till the end according to the animation value that we have. So it will go from 0 to 6 according to what number the animation value takes. The next thing is that we are going to have this child and says animation.value0. So if the value is 0, we will start as a circle floating action button. And if it's not 0 or if it's animating, then we will have this align widget basically mean that this alignment will be on the left center. So start is always on the left according to the text, whether it is left to right or right to left. So you could see left to right or right to left. And then we will have the width factor. So this means that we are able to find the width of the align widget according to the animation value. And lastly, we will have the floating action button extended with the icons add. And then we will have the text called create. And then at the same time, we will have the padding to have the age insets from the start or which is from the left. And now we can just add our extendable FAB in our navigation rail. So how are we going to put our extendable FAB or floating action button at the top? So there is this thing called leading. So leading is a parameter that allows you to have your widget placed above the destinations. So this is exactly where we wanted, which is just above the destinations, our floating action button. So if we were to type in extendable FAB, and you just need that accordingly and we we'll save it and if you were to go over here you could see that our button has been created however since this is extended our floating action button looks like a pill or a rounded rectangle so what we want is maybe what if we hover over this navigation rail it will extend and if we exit it will not extend or contract how are we going to know whether our mouse enter the navigation rail region and exit the navigation rail? So there is this thing called mouse region. So if you were to wrap with widget the mouse region, so this mouse regions gives us the function where it says on enter, on exit, and on hover. We are going to use on enter and on exit. But before that, let's create a variable called extended. So let's type in boolean underscore extended and let's make it false so that the navigation rail will look very small. The next thing is that we're going to use set state for us to interact with this extended boolean. But first, let's create the mouse region on exit, on enter. Let's put an underscore and put this shorthand and on exit over here. So underscore and then shorthand. So we will need a function that overrides our current extended variable to be true and false according to whether the mouse enters and exit. So we can create a function that is called set extended. And then our arguments is a boolean and we will name it as is extended. It's a void function and then we will type in the set state function and we were going to be overriding it by having underscore extended variable equals to the is extended variable that we have in the argument. At the same time, since we only have one line of code, we can have a shorthand and convert this into an expression body so it looks cleaner. 
if you want you can also make this into an e expression body so that it will look something like this so we will have our set extended over here now our on enter when our mouse enter we want to extend it so we will put this as true and then the opposite goes to on exit so our extender will be false now we save this okay so now you could see that our navigation rail is not extended however if our mouse hover over this you could see the animation of our floating action button extend itself and then if you close this it minimize itself so there you have it you have a very simple navigation rail animation so you can play around with this navigation rail and so Ankit Chowdhury has created a medium article that explains the navigation rail widget in detail so he has created a very simple example on how you can create this good looking navigation rail app over here so he explains on what is a navigation rail and the different UIs that you can work on in your next Flutter project and he explains the different structure on what a navigation rail requires and he talks about the different parameters like for example group alignment where you could see the group alignment for your destinations is default on the top which is negative one if you want to put in the middle it is zero zero and if you want to put it at the bottom is one point zero then you have your leading and trailing so your leading means that your top leading icons and buttons are on top and then your trailing will be your widgets being rendered after the destination and then he has the code for the actual app itself so if you were to copy this gist by clicking on raw selecting everything so what you could do is you can open a new pad which is flutter and create it pasting all of the pasted widgets here and just deleting this line of code the import statement and then you can just swap the my widget into screen one and you run it so you could see the navigation real app live so it looks fantastic clean and i like the design of it so if you were to select favorites for example you could see that the word favorites change popular ideas change also as well and this looks very very nice so one thing that he talks about is the missing features so he says that there is no padding for the navigation real destination so he has to make a workaround at the same time the vertical text customization if you were to look at that pad you could see that the text actually is vertically rotated to fit the navigation rail width and if you like this article give him some claps all right that's about it if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want more of this video subscribe and comment down below on what widget i should go through next so stay safe and all the best bye bye